All right, let's work on these feet a little bit. The feet right now feel kind of a bit small and weak compared to the rest of the body. So we're just going to start out by kind of grabbing some areas of the foot and make our brush a little bigger here. We want to make sure our mirror is turned on on the x-axis. So as I grab some areas of the foot, I just want to kind of drag it out and make my feet a bit bigger. So as I look around the mesh and work around the foot, I'm just looking for how and where uh, I should kind of pull it around. Just trying to increase the volume. All right, so if we were wearing kind of thin leather boots, you definitely see more of the structure of the foot. But proportionally now, I think that feels a little bit more like the size of the foot. And I didn't adjust it much, but it does feel like the foot fits the mesh a little bit better. All right, so we'll go back to smooth, and I want to smooth out kind of this pinched edge here. So I'll add some bulk to the mass of that heel. and then smooth it back in. Now, even though we're wearing these little boots, we're gonna see at least some of the masses of the foot. So again, as we add some of that mass, we want to smooth it back in. So the foot has a natural arch, so we're going to use our grab brush, and we're going to pull up this inner part of the foot here. I want to make sure I get to the right angle, though, so as I pull that up, I'm also pulling the bottom of the foot, not just the side of the foot. So we just keep thinking about sculpting the masses and smoothing it back in. So as we keep trying to work and pull that arch around, we want to go back and smooth in the transitions as we make little creases and bumps and folds. So we can carve a little bit negative, smooth it back in, and you know, between like the sculpt brush and the grab brush and all the different tools, you really want to kind of just move back and forth and use whatever seems like the best tool at the time. Because sometimes carving negative is going to actually give you more of what you want rather than just grabbing and pulling things around. So as we just kind of keep pushing around the bottom of the foot and thinking about how the underlying structure works. Now we can see from the back here that heel needs a little bit more work right here. That's starting to feel a little more like a heel. It's not too bad. Now as we look around here, if this is a leather kind of boot, we would need to have at least some more kind of flop and fold to some of these areas. So we're gonna add a little bit of kind of bulk around this rim where the boot would be folding over. And hopefully get it to feel a little bit more like it's actually a material. And even for, you know, parts of your work like this, you wanna be using reference material. So I'll get images of leather coats, leather whatever I can find. It's like a similar kind of weight to what I'm trying to model and use it for reference for even sculpting things like wrinkles. It seems pretty straightforward. It seems like something you've seen every day, but it's not always that easy to think about how those wrinkles work. So you want to think about how whatever it is moves, and really the wrinkles kind of move and flow with the way the object itself that is pushing it around always moves. So the wrinkles end up kind of in a defined pattern. 
that either does or doesn't look right for the object. Because if we had like vertical wrinkles going around this, it just wouldn't make any sense for the way the object moves. I can smooth that back in a bit, but I think for the amount of geometry we really have at this point, that's probably about all we're going to be able to do with this. And it's better. It's definitely still not leather, but it's better. So we can smooth that back in a bit. But the basic feeling of kind of a folded top edge to a boot is there. Now with the grab tool, we're going to kind of drag this around a little bit more because it just feels a little weak. The hard part now is actually getting the upper part of the boot without grabbing too much of the lower part of the boot here. So that overlapping mesh isn't necessarily going to help us a whole lot right now. That's starting to work out pretty well. All right, now we want to add a little bit more to the back of the boot. So we're going to go back in here and we're going to add just some feelings of some wrinkling. And again, without actually adding geometry, some of this might not work exactly the way we want it to. Now, the mesh for now is actually just too low res. So I'm not going to get any kind of good feeling of wrinkles to the surface until we subdivide. So once we add a little bit more mesh again, we'll go back into these boots and add quite a bit more feeling of wrinkling around that foot. That way we'll end up with much more of a feeling of kind of a leather boot rather than these tight socks almost that he's wearing. So we can soften that back up just a little bit before we move on to the next step. All right, that looks a whole lot better. 